Airbus appears to be entering an unprecedentedly busy period, just weeks after confirming that it is considering stretching the A350 line with a new variant, a natural evolution, fresh reports have emerged about a completely different project, a new aircraft supposedly called the A390. Rumors surrounding this jet are everywhere that it's a giant even larger than the A380, or conversely a new wide-body aircraft designed to beat Boeing 777X outright. It may sound far-fetched, but surprisingly half of it is true. Airbus is working on something more intriguing, more practical, bolder, and something with no precedent in any previous aircraft program. So what will the A390 ultimately look like? And when might we actually see it? Let's find out. Among all of the Airbus aircraft, none is more iconic than the A380, the world's largest double-deck passenger aircraft and once the signature flagship of several major Middle Eastern airlines. Yet despite its impressive scale, the A380 never achieved the commercial success Airbus had hoped for. Between 2020 and 2022, major carriers such as Air France, China Southern, and Malaysia Airlines retired their entire jumbo jet fleets earlier than planned, effectively removing around 12% of all A380s from operation. This reality naturally led many to wonder whether Airbus might be considering a successor, a hypothetical aircraft named the A390, relatively large, even bigger than the 777X, but slightly smaller than the A380. However, launching a new aircraft of that scale would force the maker to confront enormous challenges and weigh several critical strategic factors. Ultimately, every decision circles back to a single fundamental question. Is there a sustainable business case for an aircraft of this size? The key factor is economic viability and actual market demand. After the A380 failed to break even, Airbus must proceed cautiously. First, it needs a detailed demand analysis. Are there enough ultra-high-density routes to consistently fill an aircraft nearly the size of the A380 current trends, favor flexible twin-engine widebodies that allow point-to-point -point flights while a larger jet would be confined to megahub routes, limiting operational flexibility? Second, the cost per seat must be competitive. With R&D and production costs in the tens of billions, the project only works if fuel burn and maintenance per passenger are lower than smaller jets. However, since the A380 program ended in 2021, global travel is rebounding, and congestion at major hubs suggests high-capacity aircraft may return. A fuel-efficient successor to the A380 for the busiest long-haul routes could be a strategic gamble leveraging trunk routes where maximum passenger capacity is ideal. Though high-risk, the project could yield decades of near-monopoly profits. Airbus could justify a $15 billion investment if long-term demand exceeds 400 units fueled by steady global passenger growth. With strong finances and advanced technology, the maker is positioned to reshape the wide-body market and secure massive returns while high development costs would deter rivals like Boeing. If the business case proves strong enough, the next obstacle Airbus faces lies in engineering and production. The first question is whether such an aircraft is technically feasible at all. Designing a structure that is large yet lighter while still meeting the strict durability and safety thresholds required for commercial aviation is a complex challenge involving cutting-edge materials science and advanced aerodynamics. Just as demanding is the matter of propulsion. A jet the size of the A390 would need engines that deliver significantly higher thrust yet remain efficient enough to keep the cost per seat competitive. Despite these challenges, Airbus has solid reasons to believe it can overcome them. The A380 program already demonstrated the company's ability to design, certify, and assemble the largest civilian airliner ever built, giving the maker invaluable experience in managing oversized components and large-scale structural engineering. Over the past decade, the manufacturer has also taken the lead in using advanced composite materials on aircraft, such as the A350 and the A320neo. This expertise would allow them to develop a larger A390 fuselage while maintaining a strong strength-to-weight balance, reducing empty weight, and improving fuel efficiency. Meanwhile, the maker continues to work closely with the world's leading engine manufacturers, Rolls-Royce GE and Pratt & Whitney partnerships that give them access to the newest, most efficient propulsion technologies. Engines like the upcoming Ultrafan, with its high bypass ratio and significantly greater thrust output, represent exactly the kind of power plant a big A390 would require to remain economically viable. By the way, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. Beyond engineering, many are afraid that the greatest hurdle may come from the global airport infrastructure itself. An aircraft of this size would require major upgrades at any airport planning to handle its stronger and wider runways, reinforced taxiways, 
multi-level gate facilities, possibly even three jet bridges and ground handling capacity comparable to the A380. If only a handful of airports worldwide could accommodate the aircraft, its operational flexibility would be severely constrained. However, all questions will be answered once we reveal the shape of this aircraft to you. And in reality, Airbus has not let down those who are hoping for something bold. They may never label the project A390, but what the company is exploring is more ambitious, more practical, and far more groundbreaking. Something truly unprecedented in modern commercial aviation. For years, social media has been flooded with images and posts, imagining a super aircraft called the Airbus A390, three decks, six engines, carrying over a thousand passengers with a range of 7,500 nautical miles. Some sources even claim it could hold up to one 200 passengers in a high-density layout. But such visions feel more like the dreams of aviation enthusiasts than Airbus's actual plans, especially considering the A380 struggled commercially due to its sheer size. Yet the idea of an A390 doesn't end with a super jumbo concept. When rumors of Boeing's 797, a new middle-of-the-market aircraft NMA, surfaced in 2015, many assumed the European maker would respond with a new A390 aircraft in the same segment. However, this manufacturer didn't need to compete in the smaller segment as the A321 XLR already dominates the 180 to 220 seat market with a 4 700 nautical mile range. So a sensible design for the A390 would be a sleek, single-deck, wide-body aircraft streamlined, elegant, and powerful. This design addresses the A380's biggest limitation airport compatibility. Instead of being confined to just over 100 specially upgraded airports, the A390 would be optimized to operate at most major hubs worldwide, greatly expanding network reach and providing the operational flexibility airlines desire. Another breakthrough lies in materials. Airbus is heavily investing in next-generation composites, lighter, stronger, and more sustainable, which significantly reduce empty weight. This allows the A390 to achieve exceptional fuel efficiency, lower carbon dioxide emissions, and optimize operating costs, all critical factors for any large aircraft program. But perhaps the most astonishing feature is its projected range, 11,580 miles, 18,640 kilometers. That's enough for non-stop flights between some of the world's farthest city pairs, London to Auckland, New York to Sydney or Dubai to Los Angeles. This far surpasses the 777-9 and even the 777-8 positioning the A390 as the undisputed leader in ultra-long haul flights. To achieve this Airbus is negotiating with Rolls-Royce to equip the aircraft with ultra-fan engines, the most advanced geared turbofan developed to date, promising up to 25% better fuel efficiency than current engines. This represents a leap forward comparable to what the Trent XWB did for the A350, but on a larger, more ambitious scale. However, that's not even the most surprising part. Inside the A390 will set new standards for twin-engine aircraft. The cabin will be extremely spacious, seating 400 to 450 passengers in a standard two-class layout, potentially surpassing the 777X in maximum capacity. Airlines can customize everything, fully flatbeds, Private bathrooms, onboard lounges reminiscent of the A380 but far more streamlined and adaptable. Besides larger windows, improved soundproofing, cleaner, more humidified cabin air, and LED lighting that simulates local time zones, all combine to make ultra-long-haul flights far more comfortable. Notably, the cockpit will showcase the next frontier of aviation technology, augmented reality displays next-generation fly-by-wire controls and AI systems that analyze sensor data in real time to assist pilots. High-speed satellite connectivity allows passengers to work video call or stream 4K content at 40,000 feet a feet unthinkable just a decade ago. Finally, this new aircraft is built for the future fully compatible with 100% sustainable aviation fuel, ready for hybrid electric propulsion and even hydrogen in future variants. Airbus aims for a plane that is not only more efficient but also greener and smarter at every stage of operation. The Airbus A390, ambitious as it is, faces a complex web of risks that could determine whether it ever moves beyond the drawing board. At the heart of the challenge is the question of strategic and market positioning. The aircraft's projected capacity of around 450 passengers places it perilously close to Boeing's 777-9, which typically carries about 426 seats. On paper, the difference of 24 seats may seem minor, but in practice it could be insufficient to persuade airlines to invest in an entirely new type of aircraft. Airlines constantly aim to optimize operations and minimize fleet complexity, so if the added capacity does not deliver a clear advantage, 
many may prefer to expand their existing 777X fleets benefiting from commonality in engine spare parts and crew training rather than taking on the additional burden of a new platform. Compounding this challenge is the inevitability of Boeing's rapid response. Should the A390 demonstrate viable market demand, Boeing could accelerate development of a 777-10, a long-considered stretch variant of the 777X family. By leveraging existing systems and engines, the maker could offer a direct competitor at significantly lower R&D cost. In such a scenario, Airbus would bear the full brunt of its massive investment while facing a competitor capable of entering the same market with far less financial risk. Financial risk itself remains one of the most formidable obstacles as history with the A380 program has shown. Developing a brand new ultra-large twin-engine widebody from scratch could cost tens of billions of dollars. Achieving break-even requires precise demand forecasting and the ability to sell hundreds of units within a reasonable time frame. Any delay in production or cost overrun during testing could push the break-even point out of reach jeopardizing the entire program. Another concern for airlines is the residual value of such a specialized aircraft. Aircraft that operate on limited high-density hub routes typically depreciate faster than more flexible models like the A350 or 787. If the secondary market for used A390s is small, both lessors and airlines may hesitate to place orders concerned about future resale or leasing potential. This aircraft must therefore not only be efficient in the air, but also retain tangible value on the ground. Technical and operational risks add yet another layer of complexity. To carry 450 passengers across ultra-long-haul routes, it would require the most powerful and efficient engines ever built. Successfully integrating next-generation engines such as the Ultrafan to deliver both enormous thrust and optimal fuel efficiency presents unprecedented engineering challenges. Any reliability issues or delays in the engine program could cascade threatening the overall A390 schedule. Even with airport infrastructure now more accommodating than it was for the A380 regulatory and certification hurdles remain significant. For instance, demonstrating safe emergency evacuation for 450 passengers within 90 seconds is an exacting process, and any failure in testing could necessitate costly redesigns further delaying deliveries. Ultimately, the success of the A390 hinges on more than just technical mastery. Airbus must convincingly demonstrate a clear commercial advantage. The market must see that the investment in this new aircraft, despite its high cost and inherent risk, provides long-term benefits that far outweigh simply acquiring additional units of existing wide-body twins. Without a compelling buffer of capacity and range that clearly differentiates it from competitors, this aircraft risks repeating the fate of other highly specialized aircraft programs which struggle to justify their existence in a market increasingly focused on flexibility, efficiency, and point-to-point -point operations. In short, for the new program to succeed, Airbus faces the dual challenge of creating a technological marvel while proving its market indispensability.